What's up? Maz here. Today we will cover two topics with my 2019 30th anniversary MX-5. The first topic are the brakes on the car and the second topic are the sway bars or installing new sway bars. But before we get there I will just talk a little bit about today's video and I will, I will structure it so to speak. So uh, I will do a little bit of talking and then also I thought I'll show you some videos of me doing some track work from last year than I intended to do this video last year but yeah whatever it never happened so we'll do the video now so I will thought I'll do some talking and then we can see some videos and uh, you can see how the car behaves in general on the track and also I have some autocross sessions as well which we will also show in today's video so for the background of this I before I purchased the 2019 30th anniversary MX-5 then I had a 2018 Mustang GT and that car had Magnaride suspension and Magnaride suspension means that the suspension is filled with fluid which we could say that have particles in it that reacts with electric current and that can soften up the dampening or making it stiffer and that can happen many 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 times every second and also I had GT350 lowering springs on the car even with that car in track session eh, sorry in track mode on the street it still felt not sloppy but it felt a little bit loose specifically in the rear end and that car was on OEM sway bars so before I drove one meter with this car I knew beforehand that what I like as a personal preference with regards to what I like how a car is supposed to feel when you're pushing it and this car in its stock form in my opinion again then let's not make this discussion of uh, which is better or not this is for me a personal preference this car in its stock form is too soft for me and uh, with regard to that I took care of most of that with Meister R Club Race coilovers which are installed on this car I have not driven this specific car in its stock form so I have driven it only with the coilovers so on the street the car feels very planted I have to say with the club race coilovers it is a rather stiff setup so to speak with regards to the springs and also we can adjust the dampening and rebound with uh, adjustment knobs on the dampers then so but once I started to track this car so I started tracking uh, last year as a newbie so to speak and I felt right away that that what felt very stiff on the street does not feel that stiff on the track so that is that and uh, the coilovers have how should I say reduced the body roll motion and the feeling of uh, you know the weight transferring forward or you get that dip or when you accelerate you push the weight backwards that has been re reduced quite drastically with the coilover setup but I do feel that we need to do something about the lean of the car and that I will show you later on in the video what I mean and also when it comes to the brakes I felt uh, in the beginning well, let's take it on the street again this car has the Brembo brakes which comes I don't know exactly the package is in US but I think it's on the sport package and uh, I don't know if the GT package or whatever packages you might have but uh, in Sweden uh, the ND is not offered with the Brembo's unless you then have a 30th anniversary and on the street the brakes are fully fully adequate and also on the track if you're not pushing it hard or if <laughs> I don't know maybe if you're driving the car properly they will last a little bit longer but during my first session on the track or the first track event I went to I thought that the brakes yeah they, they work there are no issues I thought yeah why would I need to change something on the brakes but when I had done some more sessions some more autocross sessions and also went back to the same track with the MX-5 racing club when I started to push the limits or my my limits a little bit more and I did realize that the brakes do to fade we will also see that in the video what I'm talking about and I need to mention that I have Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires 215.45 square all around and I for the wheels I or rims I have Koenig Hypergram with the machine lip so they are gray with the machine lip and 17 times 8 square as well then ET I think it's 45 all around so uh, that is that with regards to the setup that we have on the car and I thought I'll do a separate video with how the car feels like in general on the street and on the track I do have some issues with the rear end it feels a little bit unpredictable I'm not exactly sure why I have that feeling if it's the coilovers if it's the alignment settings or the tires or the combination of everything and me as well in that mix but what I thought I will do before the season starts it's to actually 
raise the rear a little bit. I think it is sitting a little bit too low. So that is one thing that I will do and then we will get the car in for an alignment and hopefully that will take care of some stuff. But that will be coming as a separate video and maybe we can do that in conjunction when I start the tracking season again and we can see if those changes made any difference or not with regards to how I feel. But before we get on with the video, if you do like the content of the channel, I would highly appreciate it if you would support me by subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that bell icon to stay notified. And also for me, almost what is most important and fun is to actually get comments, input, saying that I'm an idiot. No, don't say that. Say that you love me and <laughs> or have any questions at all. So that is actually the most fun part, part for me. So do get interactive with me in the comment sections below. I would highly appreciate that. But with that said, let's get on with the video. track event together with MX-5 Racing Club Sweden at Gällerosen in Karlskoga, Sweden. This was my second track event on this track and it is a very fun and rather technical track. It is 2350 meters long and the track width is 10 meters. Some areas of the track are quite technical and some areas are very fast and as straight I was seeing speeds up to around 170 or so kilometers an hour with my ND2. As this was my second track event on the same track, I knew where I could push it a little bit more than the first time I visited the track. During the sessions of the day, I started to feel brake fade, but I could still modulate the brakes and stop the car coming into corners. However, with that said, I think I need to practice my braking as I tend to brake a little bit earlier and keep the brake into the corner instead of more of a stab at the brakes, if that makes any sense. This type of driving might also lead to increased heat in the brakes as they are activated for a longer period. However, I was fully caught by surprise in the moment when I went off the track. It was like I almost lost all of the brake force and the pedal became very very soft and I think the previous stress on the brakes and also I was braking maybe ever so slightly later than usual in this particular corner and that tipped the scale. Thankfully the barriers were a distance away from the track itself and the gravel caught us and we didn't damage anything, we didn't get any paint damage etc. But what I will have to do for the next season to get more confidence in the brakes and their performance I will have to update the brake fluid and also the brake pads during the off-season period. Then. The pads that I will go for are the Carbotec XP10 on the fronts and Carbotec XP8 on the rears. The fluid will be changed to Moral RBF 600 fluid but the fluid change I will do as late as possible during off season so we have a fresh fluid so to speak when the season starts and I think with these two components taken care of I think the brake performance will be greater it will give more confidence and also I will be more consistent hopefully then and I think in general in the brake zones is where I can find most of my time and make most of my improvements but we will see with these things swapped out. But for now, let's enjoy a few laps and let's talk about the sway wars in a bit.
we are once again at an event with MX5 Racing Club and now we are at Lunda Airfield and it is time for autocross session. The reason why I'm showing you clips from this event is that it shows pretty well how the car rolls, leans when we are coordinating between the cones. As I mentioned previously, my car is equipped with Maestrar Club Race coilovers and I was at the time running two or three clicks from full stiff in the front and on the rears I was 18 clicks from full soft I believe. As you can see, even though the club race do have rather stiff setup, there is a quite a bit of roll which can be seen in the footage. For a comparison, I will show a clip from a Phil Fast driver in his ND. His car is equipped with iBox springs and iBox sway bars set to the stiffest settings. This shows you how much effect the sway bars have. The iBox springs are quite a bit softer than the Meister R counterparts, but still the body roll is reduced quite drastically compared to my car. Also, I have experienced quite a bit of snappy oversteer, which I hope we can balance out with a stiffer sway bar in the front. I don't want to have the dampers in the rear that much stiffer than what I had them with all things equal at the moment, in order to be able to absorb bumps, curves and also try to reduce the oversteer as much as possible. With that said, it would require some experimentation before I find a good middle ground on what suits my driving style and how I like the car to feel. That was all for today's video. So what we will be doing in the near future is to install front and rear sway bars. The rear sway bar, I will use my hard race 15 millimeter sway bar, which I have in the background there somewhere. But for the front, we will see if we will install the James Baron Racing sway bar or not, because I don't know if you can see this, this sway bar has a three-way adjustment and the hole which makes the stiffest setting is very, very, very close to the tube being itself and I have read on the Miata forum then that a person had difficulties or it was not even possible to use this stiffest setting because the bolt and the washer actually comes in contact with the tubing here and uh, which renders the stiffest settings useless so and I can't return this because I'm in Sweden and yeah whatever we don't have to go there so we'll see if we will install this sway bar with just having the how should I say the the soft and the middle setting or if we will go for another sway bar from HR or Eibach. Let's see about that. So that was all for today's video and also do remember I will have a video coming very soon with uh, the brake pad installation as a first. So I will show you how to install uh, brake pads on uh, the car with Brembo's and uh, the rear calipers are like a regular ND but for the Brembo's I'll show you as well how I will do and also then the brake pads will be Carbotech XP10 on the fronts and XP8 on the rears. So stay tuned for that. that
that was all for today's video. Do remember to subscribe if you like the content of the channel. Give this video a big, big, big thumbs up. Hit that bell icon to stay notified for the future content. With that said, I'll be seeing you on the next one.